Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Look around. You can find cars like these on Auto Trader. New cars, used cars, electric cars, maybe even flying cars. Okay, no flying cars, but as soon as they get invented, they'll be on Auto Trader. Just you wait. Auto Trader. Now, the greatest story never told with Miles and Thrill. Oh, welcome to the greatest story never told podcast. Three minutes of 50 episodes. We are recording this, correct? Okay, just checking. All right, yes. We had a, uh, a bunch of uh, stuff lined up for you today, special guests and everything else. and Well, all that fell through. But uh, we made it to 50 episodes of The Greatest Story Never mm-hmm. Told, so a true celebration. We do expect to be getting pizza later on this afternoon. Not uh, that 7-Eleven stuff we bought earlier. Or uh, maybe a 12-pack of beer would be delicious, but uh, either way, here we are. Uh, we'll start with a couple of emails. Uh, this one is uh, Greatest Story Never Told. Thrill's great idea. Guys, you aren't going to believe this, but in the middle of Thrill's sarcastic rant on the last episode about thinking of creating a music streaming service called, quote, Spotify, (laughs) so that a bitchy listener could choose what they want to hear, Radio.com interrupted with an ad in Spanish for Spotify. Are you kidding? And had me dying on my drive. Your show never ceases to entertain in weird ways. Keep up the great work. That from Jonathan. Wait, so an advertisement in the middle of the podcast. For Spotify. In Spanish. In Spanish. Is that our uh, is that our audience? I, I guess maybe. Hola. Hola. I mean, we have no idea what happens during this podcast. No. I might get interrupted right now. I have no idea. Do people download this thing, Mike? Do you know? Do you have any numbers on this? I thing? believe they do. I mean, I don't. They don't share the numbers with me, but yes, they do download it. I wonder why they don't share the numbers with anybody. It would be nice because they suck and they don't want to hurt our feelings. Okay, we know how it is. Yeah. If we tell them only twelve people, I'm like sure I could thing, get them. Then uh, they won't want to do it anymore. We're gonna talk to our buddy. Uh, this is a nice one. Uh, we used to work with a guy named Chris Robertson in uh, in Baltimore at Live 1057 when we started out, and uh, he was we know a sales him, guy. We know him as Sprout. He's a teeny uh, tiny wee man. That was his. Uh, that was his nickname back in the day. Great guy, it, and, uh, and, but the and took care of the came show. Up, listen, he's a sales guy that worked there. He never asked to be called Sprout, but we're on the air, and the name Sprout was mentioned. And I swear to God, by the time we got to the commercial break, everyone in the hall was now calling him Sprout, and he was not happy about it at first. I'm like, dude, I I didn't think this would happen, but he was Sprout. Even yeah. the boss started calling him Sprout. And when you wanted to have a, uh, a good time at the radio station, as far as what we were doing back there, uh, Chris, a.k.a. Sprout, he was the guy to get it done. Oh, yeah. uh, when the Hustler Club opened up in Baltimore, and, and keep in mind, it was not this area of Baltimore where most of the uh, establishments were of that variety, not the greatest spot to be in. It was just a place where you really had to be horny to want to go. Uh, it was just based on talent alone. And the clubs were, you know, older. Uh, they really didn't have the flair to them. But Larry Flint came in, took this big building, and tried to transform that block a little bit. But the Hustler Club was much more high end. You know, you're very talking, nice club. You're talking about a Ruth Chris steak instead of going to Golden Corral. That's you know kind of the difference. And so when this club opened, it was it was phenomenal, and we got a chance to. I think that was one of the times where we had uh, Dennis Hoff in studio. Oh, Dennis Hoff, Larry Flint. Larry he wasn't Flint. in studio, but he he was at the right. club. Ron Jeremy, because Larry's going to be there for the grand opening. So, Although like, one of the funnier things at this club, all right? So like any club, uh, and this is a strip club, obviously, but everybody, you know, please welcome so-and-so to the uh, stage right now. So one of the things they'd done, they gave Miles and I okay. cordless <laughs> microphones, okay? <laughs> this was, oh, but the idea no. was, because every once in a while we we did whatever station business we were doing. I don't even remember what it was. But Anyway, we're we're watching TV. I want to say it's like the Super Bowl or something. Yeah, it was. Super so Bowl. we're in a slightly different section. We're watching the Super Bowl, and this is the Janet Jackson Super Bowl. Okay, so we're watching the Super Bowl, and Miles looks at me and goes, "Man, you realize this guy every time he's welcome to oh the stage." So oh Miles my, oh grabs the God. mic. And Miles, I'm like, "Hey!" Just in the middle of nowhere, <laughs> Miles will be like, "Come to the stage right now. We have candy," and you'd see the stripper hauling ass, right? <laughs> Because she no. thinks, oh yeah, but he's got a live mic, man, and so we can mimic the guy. <laughs> we did it. So he all would say, night. like, he's like, you know, like he would be like, all right, don't forget on Thursday night, it's uh, it's gentleman's night here at the Hustler Club. <laughs> and then we kind of like, also don't forget it's Twiggy night. Bring your Twiggies. <laughs> 
<laughs> but everything we can think of. Yeah, hey, kidding. somebody forgot to flush the stall in the upstairs bathroom. Yeah. We don't want to say what you ate for dinner, but, but everyone thinks it's this guy. Right. And he can't figure out where it's coming from, which was the best part. Ron Jeremy doesn't do much except for eat, have sex, and sleep. That's mm-hmm. kind of his whole thing. He's not really a big drinker or whatever, but apparently he's one of these guys that uh, likes to eat, likes to take you know three or four naps in the middle of the day. Uh, and Larry Flint, you know, he is just bitching about the fact that uh, – that Ron ate, you know, they had like a platter and stuff. It was a grand <laughs> opening. And so Ron was eating all the shrimp off the platter. And and Larry wanted some. But, you know, Larry's like, God damn it, Ron, quit <laughs> eating the shrimp. <laughs> uh, as time has gone on, I'm pretty sure Larry's still around. I think so. I think he's around. Uh, Ron's been in trouble lately for various things that, you know, don't shock me too much. Uh, and, of course, Dennis Hoff is dead. He's right. passed on. But we had a good time uh, working those venues. It was, and, and the crazy thing about that venue was it was almost like a casino as far as the way that the security detail was done. There were cameras all over that place. In the master control room for security, it looked like, I mean, it looked like the control room for NFL football or a live sporting broadcast from the Olympics. There are 50 screens up on the wall. And they're serious these about their security. control uh, Miles. center. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so they had these big red uh, chairs. And, uh, you know, some ladies might want to take you over there and give you a little dance, whatever the deal is. Or you could just sit and enjoy the action from there, whatever. So I'm dating this young woman who ended up being my wife. And we were, you know, young and fresh in a relationship. So, of course, she's going to give me a lap dance in this chair. So she starts giving me a lap dance. I mean, I'm not even 30 seconds into this lap dance before tap on the shoulder. You guys got to leave. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm here for an event. Right. Like, I can't leave. So we had to find, like, you know, Dennis and Larry going, no, nah, just leave. Them the right. They're going to kick them out. But he's like, right. well, you can't, I, man. I, I'm kind of working like, here. I didn't know you couldn't get a lap dance. <laughs> well, you can, but just you need to kind of. From an employee. Employee would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> Give them some money. Welcome to What If. The show where I, Jake from State Farm, answer your insurance what-ifs. Today's caller is Gio. What's up? Hey, Jake. What if I'm shopping for a new policy, but there are so many options that I freeze up and just can't choose? It's okay. An agent can help you choose the right coverage. At State Farm, we're there for your what-ifs. Oh, now what if I need help deciding on dinner? Tacos. Good idea. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Call or go to statefarm.com for a quote today. So anyway, this is uh, an email we get from Sprout, and uh, it's about the greatest story I ever told. He says, guys, I was recently made aware of your podcast when someone commented on my YouTube page about the greatest story never told. He has a YouTube page? As they were searching for one of the infamous bikini contest videos. Oh, oh, rush hour. Yes. It was fun to hear Drep and all the old stories about the days of Live 105.7. So many crazy stories from those days. Was interested uh, to hear the story. When they tried to make you sign a new contract, which is very similar to what they did to the salespeople. Of course, I didn't think this was legal either. And long story short, out of all the salespeople, I was the only one to refuse to sign and went on to start my own ad agency. I still remember being unable to control the huge smile on my face as I delivered my two weeks notice. Uh, There were a few stories that uh, weren't quite as I remember. You mentioned at the Rush Hour Bikini Contest, there were salespeople freaking out trying to stop the nudity from happening. I mm. believe that was more programming management, wasn't no, it? No, it was, it was one particular sales guy. It was not Sprout. One thing that Sprout and I agreed with in this particular moment, I won't go through the whole story, but it was a bikini contest. They asked me to host it. It was this place called Rush Hour. Sprout's account, no big deal. Pretty cool with the owner. And there were I can't remember this dude's name. Good-looking black dude that worked there. I remember he had the goatee. Tall oh, guy. He was pretty yeah. tight with Ted. I can't remember his name. No, no not me. Not me, Mike. Uh, different black guy. But uh, I remember he was at this event, and so we did the bikini contest. I remember this one chick who liked me, and she had, uh, as you would say, the pumpkin butt, as it were. <laughs> she decided to join the bikini contest, but she didn't have a bikini, so she's just in her bra and underwear. But she, uh, Dude, it, it was spectacular. Anyway, the bikini contest, maybe 20 chicks were in this. Mm. And I'm, I'm not sure how it happened, but at the end of the contest, you, you bring them all back out on stage, you know, to say thanks, give them a round of applause, whatever. Well, the music's playing. These chicks start making out. They start getting naked. I mean, it, it descended into the dream that you'd want it to be. Now, like I said, me and Sprout are fine with this because the chicks are hot and they're getting naked and they're making out. Say no more. But the, the one sales guy, I remember, he looks at me and goes, you have to stop this. And you'll have to edit this. I looked at him, I'm not stopping a f- Thing. This is their decision. I did not encourage this. This is a benefit. This is like the cherry on the icing. But it became this notorious, notorious thing where even the bosses are like, hey, uh, 
we heard about uh, the Rush Hour Bikini Contest, and I had to play stupid. I'm like, sure, sure, sure. Uh, what happened at the end? I'm like, I don't know. Nothing, <laughs> really. And they're kind of giving me the slogan. Now, keep in mind, this same place, Rush Hour would also pay for us to do our show from there on occasion. And so <laughs> the bosses were not scheduled to be there. So as I'm doing the show, smoking a hookah, this, <laughs> it's like a six-foot hookah, and there's all these tubes. And the guy I'm working with at the time, he's talking, and I'm you know, smoking a hookah. And I remember as I'm inhaling, my two big bosses walk into the event, and they're just looking. And we're just set up at tables. And, uh, yeah, so they're looking at me. And I remember we go to commercial break, and my one boss walks up, and he goes, were you smoking that hookah? I said, I was. Now, keep in mind, at the time, CBS, they were all about uh, the employee <laughs> handbook. I said, so, man, you can't smoke a hookah live on the air during a show. And I said, it's not in a handbook. I didn't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> and got out of it. Oh, you found video of the Rush oh, Hour. Oh, yeah, I sure do. I got a little of it here. That's the fastest I've seen Mike take off his headphones. Now, here's Steve right here hosting. I don't know what you're Where looking at. You're right here. Oh, yeah, you right. should be looking right here. Oh, yeah, baby. Dude, there's, there's chicks all around. So everywhere you looked, there were women. That's unbelievable. Okay, oh. so uh, he goes on. Uh, let's see. He says, uh, there are a few stories that weren't quite as I remember. The Rush Hour Bikini Contest. Uh, I'm not sure uh, who that salesperson was because Rush Hour was my account. Mm -hmm. And I was the one who bought the beads and brought them and talked the client into ponying up $500 for a bead contest. Also on the Ho 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 Down story, I believe you said that Pasha and Medlock were huge supporters of the event. But as you can see from the screenshot from my Facebook page, they claim they knew nothing about it. Uh, if <laughs> listeners want to see some of the video footage, I have some of the bikini contests and a highlight reel from Ho 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 Down on my YouTube page, which people should be able to find by searching Superstar Chris R on YouTube. I did cut certain parts out, like where some of the DJs were cussing out particular people in management, and unfortunately had to edit out all the nudity for YouTube. Uh, anyway, I uh, hope you all are doing well. Uh, keep up the good work. Attached is a screenshot of my donation to the Fisher House from oh, my nice. company, nice. Outshine Marketing, in Baltimore, and the amount of uh, $105.75. Ah, well done. Uh, P.S. I clicked on the link from your website, but it would not let me uh, designate the Washington area Fisher House. So uh, either way, that is all good. And uh, you know what? Uh, Sprout's got a lot of good uh, videos up here. He's got Rush Hour Bikini Contest 1, Live 105 Party Deck at Edgar's in Baltimore. Is that the one? Uh, the SWAT team showed Did, up, I think, Is man. this the SWAT team one? It's got to be. That's the only, So I don't remember what the bosses had said to us. I don't think this is the SWAT team. Bef no, that's not. Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty good contest, though. Going wow, on. what a contest! See, Mike, those are the good old days. Yeah, and I mean, these chicks were around all the time, everywhere. Okay, so all right, so uh, as far as the ho 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 down, <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ, we uh, we look young. Oh man. Okay, so uh, all right, so basically, here's what happened with the ho 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 down. So the ho 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 down. We get this memo from God, the bosses stuff, that uh, that basically said, "Hey, uh, we're not going to have a Christmas party this year." And we had two or three radio stations in the building. We were a close net family of employees. Sure. Um, and, and we did enjoy each other's company. We would, no matter what, we would go to the bar with the guys from the mix radio station. Yeah, everybody uh, was in, man. For the, for the most part, you know what I mean? If you like to drink and hang out, we were your show on the radio station because we were the only live and local show. Howard was on in the morning, Don and Mike were right. on in the afternoon. They were in D.C. We were the show that went out and did most of the events for our radio station, because we were the local show. Tom Likas was on at night. Uh, we also had Ron and Fez on for a little while. There were a number of shows. That they, they the Vocal through. Minority? Yeah, Vocal Minority was on. Who originated out of Seattle. Right, at enough. that time, ironically enough. Um, but they didn't want to do a Christmas party. So we said, the hell with it. We're going to go. For the with, company. Keep right. in mind, I mean, gonna, this is all the stations. They, and, and the way they operated, one of the things that everyone looked forward to, because, like I said, sales and programming, everyone got along, for the most part. Well, we always looked forward oh to the Christmas God. party because it's the one time we'd all get together. And they decide, you know, like, hey, we're not doing a Christmas party this year. Mike, look how young we look here. No, this don't. Is insane. Man, it depressing. doesn't look like the same people. Oh, my God. All right. All right. Shut so up. look. Look how young we look. There's we so don't, much color in that beard. I know. Look. Oh, my heavens. We don't even look like the same people. We have completely trashed ourselves on drugs and alcohol. <laughs> yeah, we have. <laughs> we really There's have. John Boucher, who was a promotions director. So uh, this was um, – so basically what happened was – we decided that we were just going to go on the air and throw our own Christmas party. We it. did not have a location. We did not have anything. Like, basically, we were just out like, hey, 
Has anyone got a dining hall or something we can use? You keep in mind, I mean? we were invited at this point. We were so pissed off about this. And, and everyone that worked at CBS Radio was just pissed that we're not having a Christmas party. So we said this is for every employee and any listener that wants to join us. We just need a place. Right? We had no plan. We just went on there and said it. And sure enough, what is it, G&G Catering or something like yeah, this? Guy calls so. up and says, hey, man, do it here. So we picked a date. He provided all the food. There was no charge to get in. There was no charge to us for throwing the party. And this thing went off the freaking hook. Yeah, it was insane. It was it was great. Uh, we had awards. Uh, the hottest MILF award, apparently. <laughs> That's what I'm looking at right now. It's an actual <laughs> yeah, trophy. And I think I'm giving her the trophy. <laughs> Uh, yeah, there's another more trophies. Uh, we 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 uh, we had a good time. So we got you know we got a trophy company who joined, it. and the thing was was that all of this was on the house, by the way. Oh yeah, the trophies they were given to us. The for lovely free. Renee in the house. Boy, she's hot. Yeah, we had uh, we had a good time. But either way, uh, so okay, uh, so we had this party, and it was these. It was packed. There was a line around the block to get into this thing, and it was free. Keep in mind that was our other thing. Yeah, all the booze was provided for. Keep in mind the booze, the food, the whole, this is completely the trophies. Illegal, right? I mean, <laughs> for the most part, you can't do this. You got to get fire code involved. You got to well, you know, you yeah. got to sell the crap with vendors and all the stuff they do. Now we just said the hell with it. We're going to have a party. So okay, um, all right. So they start a little discussion here on Facebook. Uh, one of the people says, um, and this is uh, his name rhymes with Phil Masha. <laughs> Phil says, no, I was not in attendance at this event. OK. In <laughs> fact, I don't even remember it. Are you sure this was 2003? It was 2005 after I was gone. Josh Medlock, you probably remember. Chris Robinson says, says uh, I was long gone in December of 2005. But here is the ho 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 down for the hottest mill forward. Mm. Uh, yeah. Josh Medlock replies, oh, did I not put the rest of it on there? Basically, they both denying had any knowledge about the entire event. They knew about it. We did it on the air. Yeah. And then once we got the date, but this we is perfect for those two. except talk about it on the oh, air. Oh, Jesus. Wow, man. Times have changed. They really have. They re- yeah, go back so Mike can see the butt. <laughs> I mean, but it was, uh, it, was a, it was it was just a fantastic – yeah, I mean, this is what's going on in our parties. Goodness gracious. Yeah, it was a much better time then. Yeah, I mean, but that's used, that was how we rolled. There's right. uh, John Boucher. He was the roller disco champion of 1976 or 79 in, uh, in Baltimore City. But, yeah, we, we actually did pull that party off. I mean, we could never do anything like that now, but it was, uh, it was a cool time. Was, I mean, we uh, could. We'd just get fired. Yeah, and it's weird looking at this video because just we are old now. I'm so sure where do people go to see this? I, I have not seen uh, any of this stuff. Sprouts, uh, it's his YouTube.com channel. And again, it is uh, Superstar Chris R. Uh, R, just the letter. And by the way, uh, most of the stuff that he's got on here, you'll see Live 105 Deck Party, Rush Hour Bikini Contest. Oh, he went to the AVN convention. That's probably pretty good. Shocking. Keep in mind, yeah. Uh, ho, ho, ho down uh, reel is what we're looking at now. Uh, but yeah, there's a number of uh, there's a number of cool things on this page here. I don't know if it's if it's uh, it's he's just got a lot of different stuff. But, but radio used to be a much different animal, a much 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 different. SR animal. seventy one live at rush hour. Boy, how the mighty have fallen there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good God, Buck Cherry live at Hustler Club. <laughs> good but, times. Yeah, do All yourself right. a favor, find that yeah. you'll get some insight into how things at least used to be with us. Yeah, anyway. That's, uh, that's and don't comment cool. on how young we used to look. Yeah, please don't do that. All right, there you go. There's the uh, greatest story never told. Uh, episode number 50. Enjoy. You've been listening to The Greatest Story Never Told with Miles and Thrill on Radio.com. Oh, man. A Double Flush production.